On the 26th of May 1941, a steamer serving orders from the Vichy government was ordered to stop by an Allied warship. The Winnipeg complied and soon armed crews from the Van Kinsbergen entered the Winnipeg and evacuated both the ship and its passengers to the port of Spain. Two days later, she received orders to capture another Vichy steamer. In 1928, the Venezuelan rebel Rafael Urbina sought refuge in Curaçao, stole a boat, and took the governor and chief of police with him. This raid of some sort was an embarrassing event to the Dutch government. Until now, there was no ships officially stationed in the West Indies. Usually, vessels would temporarily remain in the West Indies only to continue their journey to the East Indies. To prevent further disasters like these, the Dutch Navy constructed a vessel heavily based upon the already existing Flores-class gunboats, the Johan Maurits van Nassau. She would be the main vessel stationed in the West Indies and during peacetime to act as a trading ship and during wartime to act as an escort patrol ship. And so Johan Maurits van Nassau was laid down in July 1931 and she was commissioned in April 1933. Soon she would be in the West Indies conducting patrols around Curaçao and Suriname, but it became apparent that it was too big of a job for a single ship to handle. She was in need of maintenance which could only be done in Rotterdam, which would mean that there would be no ships guarding the West Indies during her maintenance. The Dutch naval staff acted to the situation by approving the construction of another sloop, the Van Kinsberg. Wait a minute, what are sloops actually? Well, during the age of sail, sloops are usually warships only fitted with one line of cannons. But in World War II, sloops are pretty much similar to corvettes. Sloops are intended for escort and patrol duties but much slower and heavily armed than a corvette. They're not fitted with torpedoes but fitted with anti-submarine weapons sometimes. Now that sloop is defined, let's get back to this Van Kinsbergen thing, shall we? As previously mentioned, Van Kinsbergen was intended to lighten the burden of Johann Maurit van Nassau in defending the West Indies and training personnel. Van Kinsbergen was also meant to replace the old cruiser Gelderland from her own training duties. Her design was a major improvement from the Johann Maurit van Nassau. It features more armament and higher speed, with four 120mm guns compared to the slightly bigger three 150mm guns fitted in Johann Maurits van Nassau, twice as much as Beaufort's anti-air, and a different variety of smaller and training guns. The construction of Van Kinsbergen was authorised in December 1936, and she was laid down in the following year, in September, in Rotterdam. Launched in January 1939 and commissioned on August 24th, 1939. Van Kinsbergen will arrive at the West Indies for her first time on October 31, 1939 to relieve Johann Maurits van Nassau and trade a new batch of sailors. The next day on November 1, 1939, she intercepted an unknown British destroyer entering Dutch waters and told her to leave as the Dutch was abiding the neutrality stands declared in September 1939. The destroyer complied and soon left without any problems. Two months later, in February 1940, a British cruiser entered the same scenario, and this too was resolved quickly. On May 10, 1940, as the Germans invaded the Netherlands, Van Kinsbergen's duties as a training ship was over. In response to the German invasion of the Netherlands, British troops from the West Indies assumed control in Aruba and Curaçao. Under their own will, the crew of the Van Kinsbergen captured seven German cargo ships docked in Curaçao. With a combined tonnage of 25,600 tons, it was quite the catch, to say the least. Nine days later, she became part of the British West Indies squadron and began her service as a patrol vessel. Four days after the German invasion, the Johann Maurits van Nassau was sunk after she was harassed by the Luftwaffe during an evacuation. What's so important about the West Indies anyways? The West Indies contains several highly sought-after natural resources vital to keep the war machines running. 
such as oil to fuel military vehicles which Curaçao and Aruba holds massive quantities of. During the entire war, 70% of all oil used by the USA is refined from Curaçao and Aruba alone. It is not only oil which the Dutch West Indies holds a fortune of, but the crucial material the Allies needed is bauxite. Bauxite is the main ore needed to create aluminium, a material needed to construct fighters, bombers and other aircrafts. Suriname is the gold mine for that exact material. Suriname's production is almost as equal as those of the British Guyanese and are the top leading exporters of bauxite in the world. There were concerns that Italian tankers might block the Gulf of Marasaibo where volatile crude oil is transported and so Van Kinsbergen was called to patrol the Gulf if something like that would happen. Thankfully, after a few days of patrol, the Italian tankers in the area left with no problems. On June 25th, the French government surrendered, and this means that all of the colonial troops was to be disarmed or reorganised in some way. This situation drove panic to the British administration in the West Indies, as they feared that many French ships stationed there would join the Axis cause. First here is the French plane carrier Bern, the cruiser Emile Bertin, American pursuit planes. Is Hitler eyeing this vital Caribbean outpost? Of major importance is the restored French fleet at Oran. Vichy had repeatedly pledged the warships would not fall into Nazi hands. But with the new collaboration, Hitler may get them and get control of the Mediterranean. And so British forces occupied French territories in the Caribbean and disarmed multiple French garrisons. Several hundred of these French troops was embarked to Aruba and after some suspicion, the Van Kinsbergen was dispatched to Aruba. The Aruban authority feared that the disarmed French soldiers might sabotage fuel depots in Aruba and after a meeting between the captain of Estarel, the French auxiliary cruiser which carried the disarmed French soldiers, and the captain of the Van Kinsbergen, the Estarel had no intention to carry out such attacks and so the day went on peacefully. Sometime in August 1940, American observers requested an inspection of the Van Kinsbergen's 40mm Bofors anti-air mount. So far, the Americans were unsure which gun would be their universal anti-air gun, and they only bought several samples from Bofor which just arrived from Finland. USS Tuscaloosa was called to assist in towing a target plane for the Van Kinsbergen to shoot at. Although the Hazemeyer fire control system it had installed wasn't impressive, the Bofor gun itself satisfied the Americans. This trial ensured the US Navy to purchase and install further Bofors anti-air on their ships. As one observer, Captain Blandy, recalled the test, American planes now target for a Dutch ship firing Swedish-designed guns with the combined Dutch-German fire control system, the test taking place in the Caribbean Sea of a British port. From October to November, she would partake in the search of two Axis tankers escaping the area with no success. On December 1st, she received orders to intercept two German steamers leaving the area unnoticed. Iderwald and Rhein both carried a total tonnage of around 11,000 tons. But after being intercepted by the Van Kinsbergen, both ships were scuttled by the German crews. Several restations in the transition from 1940 and 1941 later, she and two Canadian corvettes took part in an operation to capture two Danish steamers. The steamers Scania and Christian Holm had already agreed to surrender but kept going nonetheless as they feared that their relatives back home would suffer reprisals from the German occupation force. Both steamers were captured by Husky and Vision on February 5, 1941. After the operation, she went through repairs and maintenance in Curaçao and later Bermuda. She would then cover the patrol area of HMS Caradoc, which needed repairs. On May 26, 1941, the French steamer serving for the Vichy flag, the SS Winnipeg, was captured by the Van Kinsbergen. She was escorted to the port of Spain in Trinidad and all 750 passengers was disembarked. She would be handed over to the Trinidad Authority on the 27th and would later be bought by the Canadian Pacific Line and sunk in 1942 by a German U-boat. Two days later, on May 28, 1941, 
the Van Kinsbergen was dispatched to capture the Vichy French steamer Arisa with the possibility of encountering the auxiliary cruiser Barfleur. The chase would take several days before Van Kinsbergen was able to contact the Arisa. On June the 1st, despite the uncooperative French crew in the Arisa, Van Kinsbergen escorted the Arisa to the port of Spain where she too would be handed over to the local Trinidad government. Just like the Winnipeg, she would be acquired by an Allied shipping company before being sunk by a German U-boat. On June 24, 1941, the Van Kinsbergen received orders to head for Liverpool for some refitting. She would return to the West Indies in September. Four days into the year 1942, she was transferred to the American Caribbean Patrol Force and started her service as an escort vessel, something she wasn't really suited to. Her task was to escort vessels from the ports of Trinidad, Aruba and Curaçao to the ports of Florida, Venezuela and Guantanamo Bay. A month later, the German U-boat campaign extends the area of operations to the Caribbean, codenamed Operation Newland. Von Kinsbergen's duties soon got larger and larger. After some uneventful few days and some depth charge installations in March 1942, she received orders to find a U-130, the same submarine which bombarded Curaçao, though repelled by the small Dutch coastal unit. The search went fruitless and she soon returned to port. On June 25th, Van Kinsbergen led an operation to dismantle a suspected U-boat resupply base in Islas Los Rojes in Venezuela. Search parties found nothing there of sorts, they soon returned. On August 18th, Van Kinsbergen left Curaçao and headed towards Norfolk, the United States one, for a major refit. Upon arriving in Norfolk, she received the Type 271 radar and 8 mousetrap depth charge mortars, which essentially is just a less effective, less expensive, less huge, less heavy American version of the Hedgehog. She returned to Curaçao while escorting a US ship on November 4th. On November 5th, Van Kinsbergen received orders to join the convoy DAG-18 after mentioned convoy lost two cargo ships to a German submarine. She led the rescue operation on the Astrel before intentionally sinking her due to her damage to be beyond repair. Her search for the German submarine was fruitless and she joined the convoy until their destination. In the early morning of November 10th, the convoy TAG-20 left Port of Spain heading towards Guantanamo Bay, U.S. naval base. The convoy was escorted by the USS destroyer Betty, Corvette Spire, gunboat Erie, and three PC-461-class submarine chasers. They made a brief stop at Aruba where Van Kinsbergen, Queen Wilhelmina, and three other American submarine chasers patrolled the area before joining the convoy. At 1703 hours, the USS Erie was fatally struck by four German torpedoes and after a battle against other incoming torpedoes and her continuous listing, the order to abandon ship was given at 1826 hours. Van Kinsbergen and Queen Wilhelmina got into contact with the German submarine, but the German submarine was able to escape unscathed. Van Kinsbergen also rescued the crew of the USS Erie. 1943 was a relatively dry time of the service. She went through a minor refit in the US and took part in several submarine hunting parties with no results. In 1944, she became part of the hunter-killer group in the Western Atlantic and later in the year, she underwent two refittings. On August 31st, 1945, she docked in Merwehaven, the first time she has docked in a mainland Dutch port for six years. And that is the story of the Van Kinsbergen. After her return to the Netherlands, she will never return to the Dutch West Indies for service ever again. She was dispatched to the Dutch East Indies to quell the Indonesian Revolution there. After 1949, she would serve in the Dutch New Guinea before being converted to an accommodation ship in 1955. She would later be decommissioned four years later in 1949. She remained as a practice object until 1974, where she would be scrapped in Belgium. Her 20 years in commission is also her 20 years of unwavering loyalty. <laughs>